Well, good morning. <clears throat> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another Ernest L. West broadcast. Amen. God bless you. Come on in. Come on in. Give me one second. As I said, like I always do, no music, no nothing. I don't need all of that. You know, I would like to have it. But to this morning, this morning, I'm not going to be too long. I'm not going to be too long at all. But I do want to um, say to you that I want to talk about the messages. God is looking at your sacrifice, your sacrifice. And what is a sacrifice? Something that you're willing to get up, give up for something more valuable. Jesus said that if any man come after me, he must first deny his flesh and take up his cross and follow me. And so today I just want to talk about sacrifice. When as sacrifice as sacrifice in a relationship with a man and a woman, when this guy meet this girl, he meet this lady, he has to sacrifice time with his boys he had to sacrifice all his time to spend time with her and like man in the same with the with the young lady with the guy and so what it is is that you have to give up something you have to give up something that hurts to be denied something that's a sacrifice um with my son daniel when this happened to daniel um it was in my heart to do everything i could to make sure that Daniel was okay, which was and is a sacrifice. A sacrifice is something that you give. And see, the thing about it, in the days of old, in the days of old, the priests uh, before Christ, when the people would sin, the only way that the priest and the only way that God can hear and forgive the priest or forgive the people through the priest, they would have to go get a bullock, a lamb or a goat. Something that was pure. And from its purity, uh, they would use it as an offering to be able to bring forgiveness in order to be extended and also to communicate. Also to sacrifice when you give up something, what you're doing when you're sacrificing something for God, you want to communicate with God. Jesus said, as I said, you have to give up. That's why he said, rend your heart and not your garment. It's because Jesus, God wants to communicate with you. That's why the Bible says, he that has an ear let, ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. In order to hear what the Spirit is saying, you got to get in tune with the Spirit. The Bible even lets us know clearly uh, to know no man after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, the flesh, oftentimes we, we look at the flesh, we see in the flesh, we feel in the flesh, but God don't want us to look at our brother and our sister after the flesh when they do something to us or they say something to us or, or there's a disagreement. God wants you to think and look at them after the spirit. Look at their heart. Look at who they are. People all times make mistakes, but when you're family, family love. Good morning, good morning, good morning. But what I want to talk about, God is looking at your sacrifice. Genesis, in Genesis 22, it talks about Abraham. And Abraham, God was testing Abraham to see where his love was at. And God told Abraham to go up to this Mount Moriah and give your only begotten son and there. And Abraham obeyed God and he went. He didn't want to. He didn't want to. He didn't feel good at all. See, when you sacrifice something, you don't want to do it. Just as like if you want to look good, if you want to look good in your body, you want to live a long time. You have to sacrifice the things that you enjoy, foods. You have to sacrifice sweets. You have to sacrifice things that will hinder you from reaching your goal. You have to deny that in order to get what you want, in order to get your destination, what you want. You have to deny uh, your foods. Good morning, Doris. I'm talking about sacrifice. And so that's what God wants. God wants you to sacrifice. Just like when you want to work out, you want to look big, you want to look healthy. You got to sacrifice the bad foods and take time and eat the good foods. See, that's the thing that we must do as people in relationships. We must sacrifice. And see, God is after your heart. That's what he's after. See, because the thing about it, even with Abraham, 
when Abraham got to that place where he got up to the mountain, he, he, he told him, he told he'll be back and his other son, he'll be back. And he went up, he went up to the mount and he prepared, the, he prepared everything and everything. And his son said, where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will provide a sacrifice. And when Abraham was willing to give up and willing to kill his son, God said, no. And then God found a ram in the bush. See, many of you, this is what God is doing. God wants your sacrifice. And the reason why God wants your sacrifice, God wants to see where your heart is at. God wants to see if you really love him. If you say you want this miracle, God wants to see, do you really want this miracle? And if you want this miracle, you must sacrifice. In other words, you must sacrifice. You must sacrifice your flesh and deny yourself and seek faith. You must sacrifice your emotions. You must sacrifice your fears. You must sacrifice people around you and get to God. See, because your miracle is greater than where you are. If you want a miracle, then you must give up something. You must give up. You must give up your time. If you want your miracle, you must give up uh, those uh, those times where you watch TV. If you want that miracle, you must even uh, change even how you talk. You must spend time with God. Uh, by reading your Bible, by, by doing things, by being nice to people and what you're doing, you're sacrificing. In other words, you're doing things uh, that hurts. See, another thing that, that, that will receive and that will cause you to receive the blessings of God is forgiveness. See, because forgiveness is a sacrifice. The Bible said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. In him giving his only begotten son, it was a sacrifice. He gave his last he gave the thing that meant more to him than anything. And see, that's what God wants from you. What are you willing to give up? Just like the rich man. The rich man had all his money. He said, the rich man wanted to wanted the kingdom. He said, what do I do? He said, sell all your, sell all your money. He, he wouldn't do it. He went away upset. And that's why Jesus says, easy for a camel to go through an eye of a, a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's because that was his God. That was the thing that he loved more than anything, the money. See, God wants you to give, or God wants you to be willing. Are you willing to give away the thing that you care about, that you love more, that you love, that you value? God wants you to give, God wants you to give, give him that. See, do you love him more than that? Even he asked Peter, love thou more than these. Do you love God more than money? Do you love God more than things? Do you love God more than your kids? See, because if you put anything before God, it becomes your God. And so that's why we must be able to give God, give God our heart. Stop talking about, stop talking about what you're going to do. And the time has come for you to give God your heart. That's what he's after. He's after your heart, your heart, that the heart that's broken. He's after it. The heart that's bitter. He's after your heart. He wants to change your heart. He don't want you to live in bitterness. He wants you to hold on to that stuff. He don't want you to hold on to that pain. He don't want you to hold on to that fear. See, in order to receive, you have to let go of what you have. For In order for God to come into your life, in order for God to give you your miracle, if, in order for God to give you your breakthrough, you must be willing to give up what you have to get God. And all God wants is your heart. Will you give him your heart? Rend your heart and not your garment. And see, with Abraham, Abraham gave God his heart he was willing to give him his son. But in the moment that he was willing to give him his son, God said no. And because of that, the Bible said his faith made him righteous. His faith. In other words, trusting in God regardless all the way down to the end. God want to know, will you trust him to the end? Will you trust him regardless? Will you believe in him regardless of what it looks like? Will you trust him today? He's after your heart. He's after your heart and he's after he's watching your sacrifice. It's your test, your elevation and your breakthrough. And the place that God wants to take you to, to is birthed on your obedience and your sacrifice. See, your sacrifice is obeying God. God said, give it up. If God said, don't touch it, don't touch it. If God said, walk away from it, you got to walk away from it. See, because if God is giving them instructions, there's a blessing that comes with that instruction. But in order to receive that instruction, it's going to take some time. Hear me. And hear me well. Do me a favor. Listen and share. God bless you and heaven smile on you. But he wants your sacrifice. He wants it. He wants that thing. He wants that thing that you've been holding. He wants that thing that you've been keeping, you've been, you've been tucking away. He wants that. In order for him to bless you, he wants your total heart. He wants your heart. He wants those habits. He wants those egos. He wants that pride. He wants that hurt. 
He wants that fear. He wants that loneliness. God wanted all. The Bible said, come unto me, give it to me. Come unto me, all you that weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God wants you to come to him. Let him take it away from you. The Bible says, for those that have a spirit of heaviness, I will give you an exchange, a garment of praise. God wants your sacrifice. God wants you to let it go. Stop trying to fix it. Stop trying to work it out. Stop trying to make it fix and make it make sense. Give it to God. And that is sacrifice. Give him your heart. Give him it. Give him what's in you. If you want salvation, you must give him your heart. That means you must change the way you think. See, some of you, your mind is your God. The way you think is your God. Even your emotions, your intuition is your God. But God wants you to give him your intuition. He wants you to give him your mind, your heart. How do you do that? God, simply, I trust you. God, I'm tired. I'm at a dead end. I'm at a dead end, God. I can't go no farther. I can't do it no more. I can't talk to her no more. I can't talk to him no more. I'm tired of the pain. I'm tired of the hurt. I'm tired of all of that. I'm tired of feeling every day. Every day I feel like I'm on a roller coaster. One day I'm up, the next day I'm down. I'm tired of feeling like I'm not going to make it. I'm tired of feeling like I'm going to fall. I'm tired of feeling like that. See, but the thing about it, even in the place where you feel like you're going to fall, God is there unto him that is able to keep you from falling. See, because in the place where you feel like falling, there's a thing that God is calling on is your instincts. That is the word in you. And the definition of instinct is an inborn pattern of behavior that is activated from stimuli. God is that stimuli. God's word is that stimuli. See, you, you think you're about to fall, see, but God is going to keep you from falling. Just like the other day, I used an example uh, that when a person is facing paralysis and they are trying to, they're, they're starting to gain, they, they're starting to get their nerves back, they're starting to get their momentum back, they're starting to get their mobility back. One of the tactics and one of the techniques that they use that they put a person who's in a wheelchair, let them uh, use their wheelchair over some rocks. And so on those rocks, they're going to toss, they're going to turn, because the rocks are uneven. But the purpose of those rocks is to get them to a place where instinctively their body will respond to not falling. See, because in their mind, because they're on those rocks, they're afraid that they might fall. And so because of that, uh, they will clinch. They will respond. They will respect. They will react. And see what it is. It is it's activating. What it is, it's activating their instincts. Well, they feel like they're going to fall. What it's doing is waking up certain things. And whatever it is, it's going to cause it to shock. And see, that's what happens with God. See, God wants God wants you to, God wants you to, to shock you. See, your pain is shocking you. But in your shock, there is something that's responding, and that's your heart. There's an inborn pattern. Instincts is something that instinctively happens when it comes from God. The Bible said, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they won't follow. See, when Jesus speaks, there's something in you that will activate. See, God wants to activate wisdom. God wants to activate your, 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 your wisdom, your power. But the only way he can activate your power, you must hear. You must hear God wants, you, God wants to activate you. God wants to activate you through your instinct. Your instinct, see, you, you're at the place where you feel like falling. You're at the place where you feel like giving up. And see, God wants you to fight. God wants you to fight for faith. God wants you to fight for victory. God wants you to fight uh, for what you want. Your sacrifice. God wants you to sacrifice. God wants you to come closer to him. But in order to get to him, you must give up something. You must give up pain. You must give up the very thing that you love on this earth. In order to get to God, you must sacrifice. You must give him even the sacrifice of praise. And see, the sacrifice of praise is, is, is a praise when you're tired. Where you don't feel like doing it. You don't feel like talking. You don't feel like loving. You don't feel like caressing. See, that's a sacrifice. A sacrifice is when you're tired and you feel like giving up like in a marathon. When you get to a place where your sides are hurting, your legs are hurting, you feel like laying down. But the sacrifice, there's something in you that make you push. There's something in you that make you keep going. There's something in you that make you push until you get to your destination. And see, God is calling you up higher to your destination. But in order to get there, you must give up something. Because when you give up something that's heavy, you're going to you're gonna go up. Because that's why Paul said, lay aside every weight and sin. When you lay aside weights and sin, you're going to go up higher. See, many of you, you're being held down. See, your blessing is up high, but you're being held down because you're still holding on to stuff. You're still holding on to your past. 
You're still holding on to trouble. You're still holding on to hurt and all those things. But God wants you to let go of it and receive. Let go of that past. Let go of that situation. Let go of that fear. See, because God has not given us a spirit of fear. And see, some of you, you are worried about, you, you got a report and something is wrong. You got a bump. And so now you think it's cancerous or you think something is wrong. Ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing say By his stripes, I'm healed. In the name of Jesus. It's just a bump. Trust God. Why not trust God? It's almost like it's naturally so. It's almost like when something happened to us, instinct or naturally so, we got to think the worst. Why not think the best? Why not think that it's God, God, God? Why not think that God can heal? Why not think that it's not nothing at all? Why not? Why think the worst? But why, let's think good. When we see our brother and sister where it seems like they might be doing something wrong, think something positive. Don't think something bad. See, one thing about sacrifice, sac in sacrifice is love. <coughs> sacrifice is love. And the Bible tells us to owe no man nothing but love. That's, I owe you that. I owe you that. That means if I love you, that means I'm going to respect you. That means I'm going to honor you. That means I'm going to listen to you. I'm talking about love. Even, even Paul says, I can speak with all the tongues. God bless you, apostle. I, I can speak with all the tongues, 10,000 tongues, but I don't have love. What I'm saying don't mean nothing at all. That's what I'm talking about. God is after your sacrifice. Love. See, many leaders or so-called leaders are preaching, prophesying, but they don't have love. And that's the reason why people's lives aren't changing. See, because like I said, God is after your sacrifice. That means that God is after your heart. See, just like in the days of old before Jesus, when the priest would offer offerings for atonement for the people, the, 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 the bull or the goat or the bull, it had to be pure. And see, that's what God is after even in your heart. He wants that pure place. He wants that place that's crying out for change. He wants that place that's crying out for deliverance. He wants that place that's crying out. Do you hear me? That's what God wants. He wants your sacrifice. He wants that heart. He wants that painful place. He wants you to give it to him. See, to take his yoke. See, your yoke is heavy, but his yoke is easy. And his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He wants to snatch you away from that. But all you got to do is let go of it. Sacrifice it. Kill it. Deny it. I know it's bad, but deny it. My question to you, is that thing that you hold on to more important to God? Is that thing more important to salvation? Is your money more important to eternity? Is your money more important to health? And see, the thing about wealth, true wealth, and true, true prosperity is knowing God. That's true pro prosperity. Because God is the earth, is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof in the world, and they that dwell therein. The cattle upon the thousand hills are his. And so to know God is to have God. To know God is to have everything. And God wants you to just lay aside everything for him. Will you love me? I'm done. <laughs> Give him. Give him your sacrifice. That's what he's after. That's what he's looking for. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day.